You're listening to the JFDI podcast with the two Lauras. In this episode, we're going to be talking about Instagram reels, what has been working for us, what hasn't worked for us, and sharing a bit of top tips to help you along the way. Their names are the same, good friends they became. Together they put their brains and magic happened. I'm talking about the two Lauras, they'll be your biggest supporters. What the selling you'll need more of. I'm talking about the two Lauras. I'm talking about the two Lauras. Hello, my name is Laura Moore, and I am addicted to reels. <laughs> Snuff. <laughs> Yeah, but it, it, it took us a while, didn't it? It took us a, a long time to kind of find our groove, get into the habit of making them. Like we'd always played around with them. So they launched back in August 2020. And I think we even did a reel pretty much when, when they first I think oh, no. did a reel on the day they launched. Yeah, which is very typical of us. When when things roll out, we we are quite quick to go and have a play and press the buttons and kind of recommend that that's what everybody does really because we want them all to kind of learn the, the process behind them. So I think we had pretty much done a reel from day one, but then I suspect <laughs> there were long periods of time where we didn't. They didn't form part of our strategy at all. No. Until, what, maybe two months to go? Yeah, well, if that, it was probably towards, no, it's probably start of September. So yeah, six weeks. Yeah. Funny, actually, when it comes to this, is like TikTok has been around forever, hasn't it? Right, for ages. Very similar content, very similar sort of idea to Reels. Obviously, Instagram stole the idea. But we have never gone all in on TikTok. Neither of us, like you will spend time in TikTok, watching TikTok. Occasionally, you've created a TikTok, like the one that went viral this week. (laughs) But we've never used that as a strategy have we no like don't get me wrong i love tiktok from a consumer perspective but from a work perspective it's it's just another platform isn't it and you know we'll always preach to people we don't you know you don't have to be on all platforms so it it would be silly for us to try to be on tiktok because we would just be stretching ourselves too thin but and i think that's why we kind of fell in love with reels because we were already on Instagram. We were already really active on there. We love it as a platform. It's a great platform for our business. So it, we weren't having to do something else in terms of go to a different platform. We weren't having to learn a whole new platform. So it was much easier, I guess, because it's part of the Instagram family. Yeah. And I think also like TikTok is massive, isn't it? There's so much competition on TikTok now compared now, to the yeah. Yeah. Reels feed. I will go in TikTok and I will play around with it, but, and it might just be me, the TikTok video builder, I find really confusing. I cannot, I don't know my way around it. Whereas Reels, it just seems really obvious to me how to use it. I think the TikTok one probably is actually better than the Reels one in that it has much more functionality, but it's whether that functionality is necessary. So Whereas Reels is much more simple, which actually for a lot of people in terms of adapting to that new way of creating content is probably a good thing. My small brain needs simple. (laughs) Yes. I wonder if you were to go on to TikTok now, actually, it probably could be quite overwhelming because, but TikTok never used to be as complex, not that it's particularly complex, but it never used to be how it is now. Just in the last year, the functionalities on that platform has changed so much. That you know, I'm sure that that's reels will will essentially follow that that route. But for now, it's a much more simplified way of creating the content, and I actually think it works. It's e- it's easier to to do it, therefore more people are going to do it. Yeah, absolutely. And I would say as well, ne- like we put off creating reels for quite a long time. Yeah, a lot of that was probably down to not really knowing what to make a reel about, what to put in it. Yeah. <laughs> We just wanted to show our faces a little bit. But now Reels, I don't know if you'd agree, Reels for me are our easiest form of content to create. Yeah, without a doubt. We can sit there and both of us will just go quiet. If I'm not a third Laura for an hour, I'm fairly confident she's busy bashing her Reels. So I, it, without a doubt, they're quick because we can quickly do quite a few. There's been afternoons where I've just suddenly done five or six different Reels 
within it like an hour and the kids are in the house and it, you know I don't as long as I know what I'm trying to achieve I don't really have to give it a great deal of thought um and because as mentioned that functionality is quite simple you can quite quickly make a nice reel and, and for my clients now I'm pretty addicted to doing it for my clients so do you think that social media managers obviously freelance social media managers should be using reels like for their own business yeah I don't think there is an argument not to, mainly because, yeah, obviously they're only on LinkedIn and it's not going to work, is it? But (laughs) let's see how long it takes them to roll out reels. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. Um, I think any functionality within any platform, a social media manager, if they want to position themselves as an expert, need to be using. You know, you can't offer a service if you can't, if you don't know how to do it. And the best way to do it is to do it sorry the best way to learn it is to do it so yes do you also think they should be offering it as a service if they're offering instagram should social media managers be offering reels as part of what they do for a client yeah it should be something that they can get their head around and offer it as a service there could be as part of a wider social media management package and actually i know a couple of people who don't do social media management but they will create reels for businesses for them to be able to post so it depends how much you love it I guess as to how much you want to offer it and there were some businesses that will lead more heavily to having possibly a bigger real strategy than to than other industries but yeah I think if you want to say to somebody I am your go-to person for Instagram and I want to look after your brand you should be able to follow that up with and I can help you with Instagram stories grid posts and reels like reels is such a big part of the platform isn't it that if you're creating an instagram strategy and you haven't included reels you're missing a big part of that marketing strategy right yeah there are so many ways now that reels are featured in people's instagram life really isn't it you can see it on a in your news feed if someone's posted it on the grid you can see it reels when you go to look at people's grid there is a separate reels feed you can see it in it, reels in explore you can see reels under hashtag feeds you can see reels if people share them to stories so that's six is there any more like they may uh, you can see that there's a reels tab on somebody's profile so you can see them on the grid yep. and on the reels tab oh you can see them on audio the audio feed yeah for each audio piece so i think it's the most discoverable that's the word. It's the most discoverable piece of content on Instagram. So I think any business would be silly not to adapt to that. And I'm and I'm not saying that that's all, always easy because it isn't, especially as a external person trying to do social media for a company. You, you will need them on board because you're probably going to need them to send you content. I without a doubt know that that's not necessarily an easy thing for social media managers but yeah in answer to the question social media managers need to know how to offer reels because it should be part of everyone's strategy i think on instagram now yeah i would agree and i think and i think we've had this conversation before between us when stories first came out there was kind of a big blocker wasn't there about people using stories they didn't know what to put on stories but everyone very quickly adapted to using stories and I think that blocker is up a little bit about reels. Yeah. You don't really know what to put on them. What should they be saying? What should they be doing? Should they just be copying what everyone else is doing? But if you can create 15 second content for stories, it doesn't last for very long. Then you could potentially do the same for reels. There's no reason why you couldn't, right? I totally get that. Like I remember there was with stories, there were lots of people saying, well, what's the point? What's the point in the last 24 hours? What's the point? But, you know, look at us all now. <laughs> But I think with reels, the benefit is, you know, 10, 15 seconds is more than enough for a reel. So it doesn't, it's not long overproduced pieces of content, but also it lasts, it's got a longer shelf life, hasn't it, on the platform. Like you were saying the other day that you're seeing reels that have been around based on the comments for like kind of two or three weeks. This week, the comments were like 35 weeks ago. Yeah. That's a long time for a piece of content to still be shown to me. Yeah, which is brilliant from, you know, it's very rare, if in fact ever, do you see content on Instagram 
that have been around longer than a couple of days, really. Normally they're gone and for not just on Instagram, like if you were on LinkedIn or Twitter or somewhere like that, it would have a short shelf life. Piece of content on, on a platform where the shelf life is potentially longer, I think it would be silly not to maximise on that potential. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if reels become the main thing on Instagram. It's certainly feeling that way at the moment. And with that, you can now do ads in reels um, and ads are being shown within that placement. I think that's, um, that it's definitely here to stay, isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah, definitely. And I think because they're easy to, well, for, for us now, they're easy to create. And obviously, I understand that from the beginning, that might not be the case for everybody. In some businesses, it will be harder to create reels than others. But they're also easy to consume, aren't they? Yeah. And if you're like Laura and I, you probably get sucked into watching them <laughs> and watching way more than you should watch. Yeah. But from like a user perspective, obviously, we see reels and we see different social media platforms in a different way to Mr. Joe Public, what do you think that they're doing when it comes to reels? When I was on holiday recently, I was sat next to a friend of mine. She does use social media, like probably on an average amount. Um, they have got a family business that they also are on social media. So she's not, she's not an alien to social media at all. And she uh, was on Instagram and she was at, she wanted to record a video. And I was like, hang on a minute, you're creating a reel. Is that what you're wanting to do? And and then we had this really interesting conversation. She was like, she had no idea what a reel was and what the difference between a reel was and a, and a video that was on a post. She understood the difference between stories and grid posts. But in terms of what a reel was, what the point of it was, she hadn't even noticed that there was a reels feed. And I found it such an interesting conversation. And although I think I'm always quite good at trying to stop myself and think, right, hang on a minute. I only think this because I work in social media. What would Joe Bloggs think? I, I am quite good at kind of stopping myself. But it was so interesting to have that conversation with her and to try. And it was actually really difficult to explain to her the differences in a in kind of layman terms really because I think we just take things for granted that we, we understand what they're there for we kind of understand even why Instagram kind of do these things or you know all social media platforms do these things to essentially get people to use them for longer etc cetera, etc cetera. I actually don't think the general public and I know I'm basing this off of just one conversation this is not scientific research, but I wouldn't be surprised if there's plenty more people out there who, when they scroll past a reel in their feed, they don't even realise it's a reel. They don't realise how that's different to, to a video. I had a uh, chat with some of my friends recently and I was asking them if they go and watch reels and they were very pretty similar. They do, they've told me that they don't go and look in the reels feed because all they see is businesses, but they scroll through their news feed and so they're seeing reels there, but they're not realising that they're reels. Yeah. They're just a video. Yeah, that is interesting. And I don't know what that really means from our perspective in terms of creating content. I think in some ways it's a good thing. Maybe we're worrying about nothing because actually, you know, if, if it's a quick way of making content and they're still being consumed, then let's not overthink it, let's just do it. But then I suppose there is an argument that hang on, if people didn't even realise they're real, why bother? But but I don't necessarily think they need to realise that they're watching a reel. They just need to see something in their feed that's entertaining them or informing them about something. And that video, whether it's a video or a reel or whatever, is then making them take whatever action it is that we want them to take. I think that's more important than the person watching it knowing whether it's a reel or not. Yeah, totally. And I just think it's just really interesting seeing how other people who don't work in social media actually use, well, Instagram. I don't know how she use any other platform, but um, it was just fascinating. Yeah. Okay, so right back at the start, you admitted that you were a uh, Instagram Reels addict, which I think I am too. What would you say? given and we're not you know we're not sitting here saying oh we know we're real experts you know we have only been fully into it a short period of time but we've already identified haven't we what's 
what's kind of working, what's not working. So should we, do you want to tell us more about what our kind of strategy was and whether that has worked for us? Yes. So let's be honest, when we first went into this, we didn't have a strategy for this. We just wanted to see if using Reels would help us in some way. Would it help us with our growth on Instagram? Whether we could reach new people? Like, would they actually make a difference to us and our business? So that was our goal at the beginning, wasn't it? It's just to see, would it make a difference? And if using Reels made a difference, what would that difference be? And obviously our strategy has changed slightly now, but we quickly found out what would work for us. And I would say there's a few different things, Like there's the obvious things. So if we use trending music, that definitely helps us. If we jump on other type of trends, that obviously helps us. And the earlier we jump on those trends, obviously the better, because as soon as you start seeing the same thing in the Reels feed, it's like, yeah, okay, I've seen that, scroll on by. Another thing that we have found has worked has been kind of tapping in to our perfect people, making sure we're speaking to them. Because with Reels, like we don't really understand fully yet, do we, how Instagram decides who sees what Reels. And obviously we use hashtags and things like that to try and be discovered. But even when we didn't use hashtags, we still got massive reach on our Reels. So we don't really know who is seeing our Reels. So we wanted to create Reels that were very specific in their content to speak to the people that we wanted to speak to. And that has really worked for us, hasn't it? The other thing that I think has worked really well has been putting in like different characters, but also like different scenes in the reels, if that makes sense. So it's not just one scene, one person throughout the whole reel, we're changing positions and like there's yeah. in the reel, that's definitely helped. And trying to increase that watch time so that people don't just watch it once, they're watching it more than once and that's definitely helped us to be discovered more. What else would you add to that? Well, I think consistently in terms of posting, so we've posted daily, every other day, twice a day, four times a day. And without a doubt that when we were posting four times a day, we were seeing amazing engagement. Our growth definitely spiked on those days. Well, you know, but you could argue, is that consistent? You know, is that, is that the right way to, to be? And you being the Google Analytics addict, you noticed our website traffic from Instagram increased dramatically, didn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Which wasn't massively our part of our strategy. So for us, we wanted to really kickstart our Instagram. We'd kind of fallen a little bit out of love with it, hadn't we? And a large part of the strategy initially was about getting engagement, just finding new people, just giving it a new kind of lease of life, so to speak. Um, and then it was when we noticed that actually we're getting more traffic from Instagram, maybe actually this, this could be a brilliant way. So it was only then really that we started to use call to actions, which were getting people to our links in bios, et cetera. So yeah, it definitely helped with traffic. Now, and, and again, as I say, we, we say all this with only probably a good six weeks of, of testing different things in our back pockets and whether that continues to be the kind of patterns that we see going forward over a period of time, who knows, we can report back. But definitely that consistency of just posting at least one a day, which some people kind of go, oh my God, what a day. But actually some of them are quite quick to make. They're really fun. They just get some good engagement. So then you, the next day you push, or the or later that day, you push out some content, which you know, is maybe less engaging, more informative, and you tend to get a bit more eyeballs on that. You tend tend to get more a, a better response then to those kind of posts. So yeah, definitely consistency. And I think what just to highlight what you were saying earlier is that, and I have seen lots of conversations in the hub about this. In that, you know, reels isn't particularly a targeted way of reaching our audiences. You know, you can have reels that reach. A you know, a few hundred people to reels that reach thousands and thousands of people, which is obviously great. You know, you look at the numbers and you go, oh, the goods moving, it's been seen by you know, 10,000 people. But the reality, are those 10,000 people freelance social media managers in our instance? And this is a downside for us when we have a, I suppose, quite a targeted niche. You know, we're 
like we're very specific on who we speak to that you could argue well is our content being seen by the wrong people which is why as Laura said it's really important to make sure that you're creating content that calls out to who you want to speak to and engage with so we try to make sure that we're putting text on that it appeals to social media managers so I suppose that is a, a good tip really to share that if you are targeting a very specific audience to try to get that across as quickly as possible because really we don't want tens and thousands of real views if they're not our right people I'm happy to have small views as long as it's our right people who are then engaging with us and following us which tends to be what's happening with us now we've, we're kind of nailed down what we're doing yeah definitely so one of the things that we've done is obviously we've, we've tried to make sure that we speak to our ideal people, but we've looked at the content we've already got. So we've gone back like on Instagram and looked at our insights and looked at our best performing posts in terms of comments, likes, what have you, and had to think about how can we turn those sort of messages into reels. Yep. We've also looked at carousels that we've created before, turned those into reels, looked at our blog posts. So any content that we've already got, emails even, and we've turned those into reels and that kind of is where our inspiration comes from doesn't it so we're not trying to re reinvent the wheel we're not starting from scratch no we've got content that's worked well for us and it's just putting that into a different way i think most social media managers for their own content will probably have that and when they're going and looking at clients they could probably look back even if it's a new client look back at what's worked in the past and use that yeah I guess is a good thing at the moment with reels is you can kind of repeat the same messages, you know, in a, di a different way of creating that reel or a different audio. Although the message is very similar, how you kind of get that across can be different. And I think that works well. And like we've done loads that one of the things we harp on about all the time is about how social media marketing isn't an admin job. And we've created so many different reels about that and they've all done relatively well. And, and I don't think anyone's been like, oh, well, you've said this before. You know, it's, it's a continuous message that we always say anyway. And I don't think it's done us any disservice to, to, to repeat that message. So in terms of transferring that to working with clients, there's nothing wrong with promoting the same service or the same product or the same USPs that you might have for your clients again and again and again. Just do it in a different way, present it in a different way, use different music and actually that's fine. So don't feel like once you've done a reel about that one USP, then that's it. You can't ever mention it again. It's kind of, it is a case of rinse and repeat, and it, but that does seem to work well. Yeah, like we did a carousel on our grid recently that was about reasons that you don't get engagement, which had actually come from an original post that had been on your grid. Mm. We also then turned that into a reel and obviously other things. So that's always also been emails and stuff. But and that was in a very short period of time. Yeah. The chance of them seeing all three of those or three or four of those is unlikely. Yeah. And even if they have, it's driven the message back to them a little bit more. Yeah. I think if you're someone like us, and this is how we tend to start doing most things where we have to try and commit to some kind of consistency, is we will sit down and say, right, well, if we want to do one reel a week, which I think is probably what we were initially a <laughs> long time ago thinking about, we would just write down 52 ideas, which actually doesn't take that long no when you you know you're keeping it really simple remember these are only 15 seconds you're not going to well I suppose you can do longer but you're not going to get a lot into these short videos are you so break it down into real simple 52 different ideas that's it that's and then you just bash them out and that's it you've got a year's worth of reels and I'm not actually suggesting you do all 52 in one go but it it makes it in my mind and I suppose we're all different but it does make it think you know what actually 52 ideas isn't it a lot we can get that done and then you've got constantly something to go back to and if you're anything like us you'll kind of give yourself that list of 52 and then you'll go off on a tangent and then never refer back to it but it, it's a good starting point I think and another thing that I'm not actually sure if you do this but if I see a good audio or a reel in my Instagram feed, I think, oh, I want to make that. But I don't know the angle yet. I will still go and record that reel and I will save it as a draft until yeah. the, the idea comes to me for what, how, like how it's relevant. Yeah. 
And I think if you've got five minutes spare and you've seen something really good that you want to recreate in your own way, do it and save it till you're ready to post it. Yeah, I've got way too many that are really random. Yeah, so also a top tip, make sure you download it. Mm -hmm. Make sure you save the audio because Instagram drafts do go missing. Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, I lost probably about 10 real drafts and they were good as well. They were really good. So it was a killer. And although although I know that, I am still the worst person to save them. Mm. It's really hard, isn't it? You've got to save them and remember, because when you save them, you don't know what, you can't save it with the audio on. So you've got to remember which audio goes with which ones you've saved. And if you've got a really messy camera roll on your phone, like I do, okay. <laughs> yeah, it can actually be really difficult. But yeah, it, it is a good tip because when you lose them, it is gutted. I'm going to put you on the spot now and oh, it's a good job that I can see your face on the podcast. Uh, <laughs> so I'm going to put you on the spot. If someone said to you, but Laura, I don't want to show my face. I don't want to point the things and I don't want to dance. Like, can they still make reels? I would say yes. Get a visa. <laughs> um, no, I'd... JFDI. <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. That is a perfect example of JFDI. I think if you're a social media manager, where you're a sole trader, you're an individual person, you're a freelancer, whatever term you want to use, and you're expecting someone to hire you, they want to know who you are. Don't hide behind a brand. Put yourself out there. Let people see your personality. The amount of people who have hired me over the years because they've loved watching my stories, watching me just be me, be really honest, true to myself, all that jazz. It's done me wonders. Whereas if you hide behind your brand, your logo, it just isn't going to work. People want to see you. And I get, like, don't get me wrong, I get from a social media manager's, manager's perspective in terms of creating content for clients, it can be difficult. And looking at ways in which you can create reels without the client's face being in it, then that's a whole different conversation. But from a freelancer's perspective, I don't think there's any excuse for not doing that. Like I, do, I don't even put makeup on anymore. I can't be asked. I just, you've just got to just do it and not care. That's what filters are for, though, isn't it? No way. I never use filters. I really should do. And in terms of the pointing and dancing, you go find me one where I'm dancing. Like, I know Laura had a bit of a wiggle on one, which um, we all laughed about when I laughed, Laura cringed. And we've done a few pointy ones, but the large majority of ours, we don't dance or point. I think that's just one of these perceptions that people have over this type of content. And it's just bullshit. Like, we don't, you don't have to point. We do a lot of lip, lip sync ones because we just think they're fun um, and they work and people respond really well to them. But you don't have to. If that's not how you want to create content, that's fine. You can talk on them. You don't have to use audio. Sarah Clay is a perfect example of that, isn't she? Yep. She just does talky reels where she's talking about LinkedIn. There's no trendy music. There's no pointing. She doesn't dance. I'm sure she will be over the moon that we've highlighted her in this podcast. Uh, but yeah, check out Sarah Clay's reels if you just want an example of like doing something that no one else is doing. Yeah, it is easy. You don't have to do clever editing, clever transitions. You don't have to do anything like that. Actually, I don't. I don't think I've ever done it. You've done a couple of transition ones, but you don't have to. There's plenty of excuses out there, quite frankly, that I just think you need to push to one side. If Laura Davis can do a reel where she's put a pair of tights on her head, then you can do a reel about anything. <laughs> you yeah. know, yeah. Well, tights on my head is better than not wearing makeup or using a filter. <laughs> Right, I've got another question for you, and this is a question that gets asked all the time in the hub and in the inner hub. Should you put a cover on your reel? I think you've probably got more of an opinion on this than I have. I actually don't think it matters much. Just going back to that conversation about the general consumer doesn't even know what something is. However... I think if you're wanting to post it onto your grid and you want your grid to look nice, then the cover is a great way to enable you to stick to your to whatever your theme or your branding may be. 
but I am, I'm kind of on the fence, really. But I bet you're not. Yeah, I am very much all for an Instagram real cover. And I'll tell you why. First of all, like, like you just said about the grid aesthetic, and I think a lot of people have put off reels because they don't want to mess up their grid. So don't mess up your grid. Put a cover on it. Either. Yeah. And covers don't have to be complicated. Just create yourself some templates in Canva like we have. But I also think there are opportunities if you've got a cover on for more people to potentially want to watch your reels. So if somebody comes over to your profile and goes on your reels feed, for example, and there's a cover that tells them what is going to be on that reel, they might click it. Mm -hmm. If they're looking in the audio feed and they there's all these different reels that have just got people's pictures, but yours says tips on how to use Twitter, and that's what they're looking for, that's the one they're going to click on and watch. So I think it gives you more opportunity if you're using them well. And I don't think we use them particularly well, but I think we use them to make our grid look a bit better. I do think it depends on who, who your target audience is. I think if you're B2B like we are, I absolutely agree. I think if you're B2C and you're trying to appeal to the everyday person who doesn't even know what a reel is, I actually don't know whether it matters that much, but I'd, I'd happily be proved wrong. It probably depends on what is actually in your reel. Yeah. Like if your reel is a bit random, but the content of it is talking about something that's important to your people and you want them to see it in your, in your grid, then maybe you want to put a picture of the product or something on it. I think the fundamental really is to not let that be a reason to stop you. Yeah, just JFDI. Yeah. Hold it and post your reels. Definitely. So just to end off, if you are listening to this and you're thinking, right, I need to get into reels, but I don't really know where to start, or you're already using reels and you just want a bit more help, we send out a weekly email, which we call the Reels Review. And in that, we share our favorite reel from the last week. And we give you tips on how you could recreate a reel in that sort of same vein. So we give you three ideas. So you can do it from a client's perspective. You can do it from your own perspective as like a social media pro professional. Or you can tell it as your own perspective as a business owner. And we also give you the audio that you can use in that reel. So. If you want to sign up for that, we're going to put the link in the show notes, but you can just go to our website and look for Real Review. And obviously all of those ideas that you, you can also use on other platforms, which you can do for all of your content that you're creating in Reels. Just go and, you know, if you've got a really good Reel that's been well received, go and write a post about it on LinkedIn or wherever. Totally. That's all our thoughts on Instagram Reels shared with you. We'd love to know what your experience of Reels are. You can come and chat with us all about it in our free Facebook group. We will pop the link in the show notes. And until next time, we'd love it if you could press the subscribe button and leave us a review. Take care.